Ensign to Condition Alpha. Report. Nothing picked up on the long-range scan, sir. I'll keep monitoring the sector. Thank you, Mr. Digbeth. Remember to watch out for Epsilon waves, which may be uh, present in this zone. Rumour has it that Carapacian bombs of war are being created in this area. Captain, we're picking something up on the long-range scans. Mr. Digbeth, report. If I'm not mistaken, it... It appears to be an exact replica of our ship. On the screen. It looks identical to this ship, the Star Trek Enterprise. Open hailing frequencies, Ensign Stelio. Hailing on all frequencies. Report. There's no response, Captain. A security to bridge. Shields to maximum. Shields? <laughs> 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 it's good time. Lieutenant Commander Birthday Breadman. <coughs> there, there appears to be an identical version of our ship on the screen at this moment. Uh, but we're getting strange signals and they're refusing our hail. Please advise. I love this shit. I love it. <laughs> Very good. Mr. Digbeth. Captain, enemy ship has also raised shields. Okay. Open torpedo tubes. Torpedo tubes opened. Enemy ship has also opened torpedo tubes. Condition red. Oh, I'll be both. Should we fire on them? They're an unknown people. <laughs> Mr. Birthday Breadman, should we fire? No. Oh. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Sir, it looks like they're about to shoot on us. I strongly recommend that we take precautive action. Fire! Enemy ship is opening fire. Incoming, 12 meters. Put it on red alert now! <laughs> and Death, direct hit. Ah! Damage report. Captain, hold damage critical. Fire again. <laughs> Phasers at full blast. Compliant. Sir, it looks like they're also firing upon us again. <laughs> Damage reports! That 34 has been hit. Report! <laughs> Shields have polarized all the way up to 30%. What, what's happened? They've disappeared! I can't seem to pick up any wreckage on the screen. However, we are getting a large reading of Epsilon waves from a nearby, <laughs> believed to be uninhabited planet. Can it be that we've destroyed people from this planet? <laughs> Countless lives. If we have shot them down in cold blood, we may have contravened the Prime Directive. <laughs> Come. Ah, Ran. I meant to talk to you. As you know, I'm deeply distressed by the ambiguous events of this afternoon. I know, but I can feel it. According to the readings, there simply was no explosion. There was no ship there. Whatever. So my conflict is, have I committed an atrocity? I feel so much pain. But yet, no pain at all. Back in my hometown planet of Hasnosia, we had a saying, and that was, trust things will get better. And I believe they will. I fear the Hasnosia system is very far away. Recon to bridge. Recon to bridge, come in. <laughs> it's reconnaissance team science commander Digbeth here. We've landed on the planet. Seems to be no intelligent life, uh, atmosphere seems to be habitable, planet broadly very good. There were epsilon waves being delivered by that ship. A singular sign of intelligent life, and a life that may have given birth to morality and space flight. Epsilon waves have also been a sign of carapacian bombs of war. And if they're on this planet, then I need to find them, understand them, disarm them, and go home. Not to the I'm ship. My real home. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> hang on. Someone's coming. Who I'm goes there? Left. Hey, who's there? Hey, <laughs> who goes there? Keep us here like this. You're treating us like beasts. You will stay exactly where you are. This is in violation of the Galactic Treaty. 
We're on the very edge of the neutral zone. This is a safe space. We mean you no harm. We know that you're working with the Carapacians. Those brown cuboids. Those are Carapacian bombs of war. We have nothing to do with the Carapacians. Those are not bombs of war. They may have taken our weapons, but I still have my communicator. Captain. Captain, you have to beam down now. The entire squadron. We've been taken prisoner. They're treating us like beasts. We don't have any weapons, we don't have any way of defending ourselves, and... And if I'm right... These people have Carapacian bombs of war. Mr. Digbeth. Captain! It's you! Ah, you must be the one they call... Commodore Peter Custodian. Yes. We have heard tales of your adventures and daring do. My science officer reports that you are in league with rogue Carapacian militants. Look there! It's a bomb of war! The eggs, or brown cuboids, as you would recognize them, contain the songs of our ancestors. Pardon me. But am I meant to take that on face value alone? Please, examine the eggs. On the side you will find an aperture, an opening if you will, in which you can check the contents of the egg. So it was the truth. These are eggs of peace. And yet I doubted. I reacted. With violence, your ship, it entirely exploded. We are a disembodied race of people. We have no imagination of our own, so when we come across another race, we find the best way to greet them is to copy what we see, which is why we created the ghost starship that you saw before you. I acted rashly, and I alone have brought death to this, your world, I accept the full punishment. I offer you my neck. Our race of people do not what you would call die. We merely, when we reach our time, become Epsilon Waves, which is what you may have detected when you did your deep space scan. I see now! We thought these were bombs of war! But actually it was peaceful all along! This has been a very grim and terrible day in the annals of the Star Trek Enterprise. I believe, though nobody died, we have done great damage this day. <laughs> Captain, I know you've got a predilection to beat yourself up about these things, but remember, no one got hurt today, no one got upset that it was just a disembodied race and everything was fine. We haven't done anything wrong. Mr. Digbeth. On your planet, do they have the concept of moral luck? No, we don't have that. Allow me to explain. Imagine one day you uh, drank some scallop juice and in your inebriated state took a skimmer out and through an accident happened to take the life of an innocent civilian. Now imagine the same situation. You drink the scallop juice, again you become in intoxicated, but this time the civilian does not die. Should one case be punished more severely than the other, when luck is the only thing that has changed? Was not the offense the same? I feel that this is the situation our starship is in. We took that action. Oughtn't we to be punished? Oh, um, no, we didn't do anything wrong. Everything's fine. I, we should, be, we should um, be rewarded, I think. Should we? Yes.